Welcome back to this series of lessons on data analysis and visualization using R. Today, I'm going to take a bit more of a look at our studio and some of the options there because I realized that I omitted to say something quite important in the previous lesson. So contrary to what I was advertising, we're not going to jump into how R works just yet. I'm going to be showing you something here before doing so. So before doing that, let's just review the difference between working here in the top left panel, which is a text editor, and here in the panel that last time, if you remember, I placed into the top right, which is the console area where we can enter instructions. So here in the console, we can enter instructions like two plus two, and then press enter to process it, or three times six and process it. But once we enter the instructions, those are lost. Granted, one can actually scroll back in time by pressing the up arrow key. You can try this on your computer. If you press the up arrow key, you go back to the previously executed instruction. And if you press it again, then the previous one and so on and so forth up to the first thing that your computer executed. And then the down arrow key goes back down. So you can do that, but it is not convenient to actually do real good work in R using the console. The console is used for throwaway one-off little things that we might want to do, such as if we want to change the working directory using the console, such as if we want to install some package through the console, those are fine to do here. And also if you want to experiment with something, but sort of serious code that we have a chance of working on and developing, we want to be writing actually right over here in this area. Now, the reason for that is simple. It is much more convenient to actually edit things over here and to fix mistakes if there are any. Uh, otherwise, in the console, as I mentioned, that is much more difficult to do. So it is inevitable that once you work a bit on your file here, eventually you will want to save your work so that you can return to it later. How do we do that? Well, first things first. We here read in the contents of the same file that we worked with last time. And again, I emphasize, do not worry about how this does its magic under the hood and what it actually does. Just be content with the information for now that all this does is read in the contents of a data file in a form that R is capable of processing. So as a refresher to set the working directory, we have to find the folder where this file resides, which is the same for me as it was last time. So I go into the mbib53 directory and then the first class. And lo and behold, there is the file. Again, reminder, it is not sufficient to simply navigate here in the file panel. You actually actively have to click the cogwheel and then choose set as working directory. And once you do that, then your working directory has changed. You see that the appropriate command has been pasted and executed in the console. You might also notice that here, which is a little bit of a, a cheat sheet for you, where you can always see your current working directory, the contents have changed. And now we're pointing to the folder where our file is. So now actually we could simply run this program. So if we do that, just in case you're interested, what this first line does is it loads the tidyverse set of packages. Then this program first reads in the same data that we had and then creates a plot out of it. And uh, here is the plot, not that it's important. If you're insatiably curious, what's going on here is that we have various species of land snails from the Galapagos Islands. And these land snails have different shell sizes and shell shapes. The shell shape is measured along some axis that we're going to be getting into later in the course. And you can see each individual plotted here. Each individual is represented by a point and each individual can live in either an arid or a humid habitat. And that's why the points are actually color coded with the red points corresponding to individuals who live in an arid habitat and blue points uh, referring to individuals that live in a humid habitat. So really all that this program does is create this graph for you. Now, if you want to save this plot, it's very easy. You can either go up to here to the file panel and select save, but possibly easier is just to use the usual keyboard shortcut of control and S, or if you're using a Macintosh, then command and S. And if I press that, 
then I get something like this where I can save my file and give it a name and notice that the folder into which it, uh, the system offers me to save it is actually the working directory and that is standard. Of course you may navigate away so I can start navigating here and going up and down the directory tree but the default is going to be the working directory which is a very useful feature because that is where you usually will want to save your files wherever your current working directory is. So let's give some name to this file. I don't know like uh, size shape plot and I will give it the extension dot r. I believe that if you're using a Windows machine, you do not need to add the .r because the system will just add it for you. You might want to check that out. I am here using a Linux machine where you do that. And it is important to add the .r extension because that's what will tell the system that this is an R script file. Uh, that, by the way, is an important term. When we talk about an R script, we are simply talking about a file such as this that consists of multiple instructions written in R so that we can load it later and execute them. So let me save it. Boop. Now it's saved and if I go back to the files panel, you see that next to the data file there, we also have size shape plot dot R. And so if I would close this little leaf here, then if I clicked on the file again, it would load it and there we go. The file is ready for execution and editing. So that was it for this session. Just a little uh, tutorial on how to save your files. So this way you do not have to lose your work once you stop using R and you can come back to it, keep editing and keep on doing your work. So that's it for today and I will see you next time.